We are live. What is going on with everybody? It's your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the Orange Dungeon, giving it to your real raw rugged. And got somebody on the other line. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who do we have today? It's Woods. Hey, man. How you doing today, man? I'm alright. Hey, man. We talked a lot before we started this interview. You're a talkative guy. I didn't, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't expect you to be a talkative guy. Uh, is, is that like a is that a misconception about you? Because I feel like. Uh, I don't know, the perception that I get from you is that you'll kind of be like a, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of expect you to be a little bit more standoffish. Um, well, usually I'm standoffish by just not interacting with people I don't want to interact with. Ooh. If we're interacting, I feel like we might as well interact until such a time as it's not fun <laughs> no i agree no, no I, I definitely but yeah i don't talk to everybody but since i decided to talk to you we might as well talk i definitely feel like it's a thing where it's like uh you know you you get labeled as like an ass not you specifically but just in general talking like people get labeled as assholes when they don't want to interact with people that they don't know like if i'm in a group of people like and i don't know you i'm not going to be like you're my cousin like oh what's going on it's like i don't really know you i don't want to open up that much to you. And I feel like that's kind of like a lot of black people, you know, not to be too friendly to everybody, to kind of be like, you know, keep them at arm's length or whatnot. Um, yeah, I don't know why people, you know, uh, get mad at people for, you know, keeping people at arm's length. I feel like that's a thing that you should do, to be honest with you. Well, arm's length is always, uh, you know, in the eye of the beholder, though, okay. depending on what your personal background is. For some people, arm's length may be quite a distance. Mm. When but you, yeah, I mean, I generally, I generally agree with you. When you keep people at arms, like if for you, if you keep somebody at arms length, is that far away, or is that like a, a long distance, or is that like a a reasonable? I mean, I'm just I'm not a person who's really um, not interested in interacting with every person. But like, I also, uh, I I like talking to people if we're going to have a conversation. I, there's a possibility we may talk about something interesting. Well, in this case, we're talking about me, a yeah. subject I already know is interesting. Super interesting. I'm a, I'm a psychology <laughs> I'm a psychology major, and I thought it was interesting of you talking about you know not talking to people sometimes because I uh, was doing something in psychology and we were talking about people who get like uh, you know I'm one of those people that gets I guess I could say emotionally exhausted from extending myself out too much so for what i do i might go out and do a public interview like go out in the street and like ask people like funny crazy questions that interaction that might reach my quota for the whole week and i don't want to go outside you know what i'm saying and uh there's some type of psych uh, psychological term for that that's in my book that i can't remember at this point in time and i don't know i feel I feel uh, a little a little weird because I can't really find too many people to uh, relate with that. I don't know if you have that same experience. And you being a rapper, you kind of got to perform or whatnot. So do you ever feel like I just performed in front of uh, 500 people? I've reached my quota of trying to extend my, like, you know, social butterflyness for the week. Um, not really. I mean, it's it, they're different things. For example, like um, performing on stage is a specific sort of interaction that for me is completely divorced from uh, just an interaction at a merch table, for example. Okay. Um, so, which is usually divorced from what could be just a social interaction. Let's say we're just painting a milieu of being on tour or whatever. Like you go on stage, you perform. At that point, it's... For me, um, a different space entirely from a normal social interaction. I mean, you're standing on a stage performing. Yeah. Then when you're off the stage and you're behind a merch table, you're still in a professional position, but now you're interacting with people also on a personal level, but also on a professional level. So it, it can be like a mix of the two. And sometimes, depending what's happening there, of course, anyone has been irritated at merch table, but I've also met really cool people at merch tables. Um, so it'd be hard to say exactly what point, you know, like it's not that hard to have a bunch of people stand in line to tell you that they really enjoyed your work. Like, <laughs> I'm 
I've done a lot worse things for money, man. Trust me. No, and I... Uh, uh, but there are points in time sometimes uh, to, again, stay within that milieu of a show. There are times where before a show, for example, you're just trying to be in your zone and um, somebody wants to keep talking to you and you're like, I'm more than happy to talk to you, but I gotta... Like, I can't be shouting over the opener set. I'm trying to focus, plus not throwing my voice out. Yeah. Um, or sometimes afterwards, uh, at times you feel less social than other times, and sometimes you're just trying to hang out, and people are really insistent that your responsibility to engage them extends <coughs> far beyond what some people would think was polite, I guess. Like what? What would you consider is like? I guess rude. It can be more or less irritating depending on the hygiene of the person who. That's funny. <laughs> is needling you at that time, but um, no. In general, I don't really find that to be the case. But I, I feel like uh, there are interesting things about um, there are, are interesting things about being an artist and then seeing how people interact with you, because I do think that. Um, some people have that reaction because of my music. Not necessarily without reason, but I'm also in a group with somebody else, and it's funny because he doesn't talk a lot. Yeah. And so people think that he's a scary guy, right? And so anybody wants anything from the group or wants to know anything, they ask me. Mm. And I'm actually the worst person. <laughs> I just, I'm a friendly guy in everyday conversation. So I, they look at me and they're like, he doesn't say anything. And so people are like, they'll be like, yo, do you guys want to play a show? And they always like ask me, like, he's just going to jump out at them or whatever. <laughs> it's just funny because of people's presumptions, depending again on how friendly you are um, in person or something. Uh, they make assumptions about a lot of things about you so it's funny no I definitely understand that on multiple levels from the hygiene level because like I said when I do public interviews most of the times I'm outside a club so it might be when people are coming outside of the club and you know people are very stink when they come outside the club because they're like I'm at black clubs so there's a whole bunch of black people in like one small room get out it might be interviewing like girls and like the weave is sweating out or dudes and like it just you know, so I definitely understand that and it's like oh do I want to do this anymore it's, you definitely smell like the bottom of an ocean so I definitely understand that and I think it's really well, all I can tell you my friend is that um <clears throat> various parts of the world people have very different feelings about the application of deodorant <laughs> and or the use of toothpaste and um Whatever you're describing to me is nowhere near what you may encounter out there. Hey man, I'm in a, I'm in Florida. There's some wild things. There's definitely you get you grow accustomed in the United States to people uh, sort of bathing themselves in aluminum gels to prevent you from smelling their perspiration. But in some other places in the world, people don't do that, and um, it can be really interesting when you play a very tiny club somewhere in uh, I don't know Vienna that's crazy I mean it's just so like American to me to just assume everybody is using soap so that's a good point I didn't think about that but then at the same time people <laughs> just smell human it is also it's just you're, I realize I'm offended by it because I spend all of my time in this you know what I mean artificial reality where nobody really smells like anything yeah i do like it though but this artificial reality well that wraps it. people's underarms if you're not used to them are quite funky that's a fact i mean i definitely play basketball so i definitely understand the underarms of like a grown man after he just went 30 minutes on like trying to dunk on somebody okay it's not, it's not I, we maybe need to veer away from this it's not good it's not good <laughs> But no, yeah, something that you... Because there's that person who plays ball and they're so sweet and then they want to, like, post up. Yeah. And it's just like, man... <laughs> anyway. 
I'm gonna just let this nigga score, man. He's just gonna get the bucket, bro. I don't even care that much, so I definitely understand that. But no, something you said about artificial reality and acting professional makes me think of something else that uh, I was talking about in psychology, and uh, we were talking about the, the the usage of backstage and front stage, and basically that's basically saying back front stage is when you're uh, around people that you're really not the comfortable with, so you're kind of putting on a performance. Uh, basically that the theory that this is all a play and we are all just acting when you say I'm acting like this like you're literally acting to uh, you put on a show to make others feel comfortable because you're not that comfortable so you're acting but backstage is the thought that oh I'm a little free nobody's around me I could kind of calm it down and I could be myself and you were talking about being at the merch table and being at concerts and it's a professional setting I really don't hear too many rappers or musicians call concerts uh, professional settings. So I thought it was interesting you said that. So I would have. way, because I said, as I pointed out, that there are different spaces that you move through in that one venue yeah. where you occupy different spaces. On the stage, there's nothing personal to me happening at all. Mm. Um, I don't see how it could. It's necessarily impersonal. Sometimes you even see people you know in the crowd, and you know them, and so it's, it can be personal in the moment, but it's different because you don't look at your friends from stage while you're like rhyming. Yeah, it's, it's just not it's not comparable. I mean, that's not my mind state. It's not personal. Um, there might be something spiritual about it that sometimes or whatever, but it's definitely not like we're just hanging out and having a conversation. And then at the merch table, like I said, I think you, it's a blurring of the two spaces. And then sometimes you're sitting at the bar and you don't feel professional at all. Hmm. I bring that up because I was going to say when you, I guess, uh, if you're at the merch table or wherever that setting is within that venue that you feel is a professional uh, setting, do you feel the need to have that type of front stage type of mentality? Like, oh, I can't really be myself 100%. I have to put on this, not a front, but, you know, just, uh, I guess you can't say a front, a mask a type of uh, thing. Like, do you ever feel that way, being a rapper and being around certain people? Um, oh, man, that is a multifaceted question. <laughs> we are going to be here quite a while uh, working on your psychology paper. <laughs> um, but I guess I would say, uh, I, I guess I'd have to say yes or no. That's a complicated question. I mean, necessarily with when interacting with people, especially strangers, theoretically, knowingly or unknowingly, you're projecting an idea of yourself forward, right? Yeah. Um, in interacting with people in what I already termed as a professional manner, therefore I must be putting on what I imagine to be professional behavior as a result, I have to imagine, consciously and unconsciously. Just taking notes from my psychology paper. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> but nah. Uh, you I probably got a couple footnotes in there, man. Hey, man. I really hate citing, so I'm going uh, to just credit what you said is mine. You know what I'm saying? We can keep it on the low, though. Okay. You know what I'm <laughs> we can keep it on the low. Uh, you know so I'm gonna, I was going to... There's gonna... a job waiting for you out there. Hey, Deb. You know what? That's funny that I say that, because I wouldn't even think about this, but I have a friend named Amp. 
And he says this all the time, and I want your your thoughts on this because it's directly correlates to what I just said. He says black people love stealing. You know, he says black people hate crediting other black people for their work. And you being a person that's black and you know creates art, have you ever had that happen to you, or have you ever had that thought in your head? Because I've seen it happen a lot, and I don't know if that's something that you see as prevalent, but I feel like that's a very prevalent Every thing. Artist feels like they've been unfairly stolen from I mean that's the oldest story in the book I don't really you know rightly or wrongly they always think that I would have to say for me I I don't even think about that to be honest Mm. is that something that you don't think about because it's just too much or you just don't care that much or is there a reason you don't think about it I I don't know it doesn't usually cross my mind I don't think that more often people mention it to me about things that I didn't really notice and honestly um, yeah it's just one of those things that I don't find it particularly interesting to think about I guess no I understand that um, yeah. but yeah before I went into that I was gonna say uh, to take a step back to how I even discovered you um, this is like earlier in the last decade I guess you could say um, you know, uh, a white man from Connecticut put me onto a lot of music, and I would have never thought that would be the case, but it was the case with uh, Mr. Needle Drop, and I remember he reviewed one of your tapes. Well, I came really close to thinking that Mo Nichols was going to get a shout out there, but hey, man. held my breath for nothing. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Fantano wins again. <laughs> held your breath for the uh, for the gal with the glasses. In Connecticut. Shout out to Chesky. Uh, who 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 is who is who is, uh, who is Mo Nichols? Oh, he's a guy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> shout out, sh- shout out to Mo he's Nichols. He's a DJ. He's a DJ. He did a lot of work for me on Known Unknowns, and mm-hmm. we toured a lot together. Sh- shout out to Mo Nichols, but uh, nah, not this time. It was uh, okay, so Anthony Fantano put you on the Witch Record. Uh, it was uh, history will be, history will absolve me. Yeah, I, I seen like that one. I, I'm, I would tell you why that 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 even like I even clicked on it. I clicked on it because I seen the cover, and I was like, wow, is this guy on the cover about to rap? I was like, this guy looks like an old black man. I was like, I don't know what this is going to sound like, but this should be fire, because this is like a, this just threw me off. So I listened to it, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what this guy looks like or who this guy is, but this is a really good tape, and ever since then, I would just keep up with you, so... Yeah, shout out to Anthony Fantano uh, for putting me on you. I don't know if you ever had any shout interactions with him. For finding that photograph and getting the rights to it from a person that doesn't even do photography anymore. Really? Um, because I was like, that's the one. Yeah, that's a great picture. Hey, and Mugabe it, isn't that old then. You know, he can't be that old yet. But you, anyway, yeah, no, shout out to Anthony Fantano. He liked that record and no. Um, it helped me. It helped me out that, uh, that he did. He didn't like any of the others as much, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I was going to ask, have you ever had any interactions with him? Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, he's covered a lot of my work and a lot of my work in Arm and Hammer. He liked the paraffin record a lot. And um, even when I don't agree with him, I respect the time that he takes uh, do what he does at that time another thing that 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 took me about that album is that you had a a guy that i would consider an elite rapper i consider you an elite rapper as well but this is before i heard you i just look at track i'm like oh this is a got this guy out here yeah rock marciano and um i would consider him a very very elite rapper and i feel like a thing about your records when you feature people that are rappers you feature like very uh very great rappers even though i never heard them I'll go and listen to him like, oh, this is a really good guy. So uh, is that a thing where you want to surround yourself around, like, great talent? Because I feel like when I'm around people that I think are great creatives, they make me more creative. Is that the case for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've rapped with a lot of people in my life, so it's hard for me to... But I guess you're talking about people featured on my albums? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know... I would say more specifically uh, by being in the group Arm and & Hammer and working with the real, Lucid really closely over this time definitely has made me a better artist. And I think um, it's been a real challenge because uh, a lot of times I look at him and I feel like he's the best 
rapper out, so it's always a challenge to uh, keep pace. And um, yeah, I think generally uh, you're not going to get better if you're not challenging yourself. I was uh, just telling Charles Hamilton this. I was saying that I think that he has a very distinct <coughs> writing style, excuse me. And I feel like you two, uh, you and Elucid, also have very distinct writing styles. And it's not normal. Like, it's not something that you would see that's like, you hear this just typical flow or the way you guys uh, just rap is not like something you're going to hear on the radio. Is this like a, a style that you practice or you came upon? Or is this like your natural, this is my first time I'm writing a rap, I write like this? To finally be mentioned in the same sentence as Charles Hamilton, so. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? The sonic god, uh, man. You should, you, should, you should be honored. Uh, <laughs> I am pretty honored, you know. Um, a tough question to answer I mean um, I think that I couldn't speak for Elucid and um, for myself I, it, it's just the result of keep working at your craft and seeing where you arrive I, it would be way more time than we have here for me to get into you know been doing it for a long time yeah I feel like but I think, yeah, you know, uh, like a lot of people who came up before me, and um, there was always the idea of being unique and, and, and staying true to what you wanted to do. And uh, that's the only thing I could really say is that uh, <clears throat> definitely you need to get back. You can't just be like, oh, I'm doing something or no, unorthodox, so that makes it good because that's not true. Yeah. But um, the best thing you can do is do the unique thing that makes what you do special and work at getting better because um, if you're just doing what everybody does, you better be really, 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 really good. I feel like you're uh, almost like a godfather of like uh, this type of uh, rap scene because... You, of course, there's been uh, multiple people before you, and there's gonna be people after you that push the boundaries of rap. But I feel like the way that, like I said, your writing style is so different. I feel like you kind of pushed uh, people's ears in the way they listen to rap because it's not a conventional uh, rap style that I think you have. And I feel like now more than ever, there's so many people that's doing that, and I feel like you can be kind of a credit to inspiring them. The people like Earl and the people like like this whole little crew that's coming up with Mike and Madani and all of these people. Um, I don't know if you've had any interactions with them. I know and those are a lot of incredible artists. Yeah. I don't know how many of them had ever heard of me before. That's what I was going to ask you. Uh, That's what I was going to ask you. Years ago, so I, <laughs> I don't know if I can go around claiming credit for anything, but I do think that the things that I've been doing and that I'm best at, um, I've been doing better than people than anyone else for a while. It's just, you know, it's just, um, so I don't know, but I don't know if I could go. I think to take that credit, people have to be attributing, you know, what they've done and what you're doing. Um, whereas I think uh, if there's some real influence that I have to leave, it's, it, 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 it's yet to manifest, really. But that also doesn't matter. Like, you can do your thing, and whether... If your thing is so amazing and nobody ever follows it again, then you know it's still it's still it's still ill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, if you're Ramosy, then that's that's cool. You don't need to spawn a whole bunch of imitators immediately. Um, but yeah, I don't even think about that, man. I'm still working. I'm supposed to be getting better, man. You are. I feel like. Trying to ship me out of here, man. Matt, listen, bro. I feel like every album you get more vivid. I, that's like if I had to like uh, give you like attributes and like your best attributes. I feel like one of my favorite attributes about you is like you're vivid, but it's so weird because, like I said, it's not like conventional. Like when you listen to like a storytelling song, like a Nas. I feel like Nas is probably one of the best storytellers ever. He's gonna tell you a story, yeah, and it's yeah. it's gonna be very it's, gonna be, it's very formatic, and it's you can very like, easily follow it along. I feel like you. It's 
you could take me a whole different, like, fucking around the block, up the corner in fucking 30 seconds. But I understand where I'm going. But it's just so chaotic sometimes. But it's so vivid. And I see everything. I don't know how you do that. But, man, you're super good at that. It's not even a... As it's no, you're really good at that, though. Really good at that. Do you have any... I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like gloating a little bit. But do you have any traits that you think that you've honed really well? Trying to work, I'm still trying to work at it. Oh man, come on, man! You can't be humble I like that. Job, but just trying to do what, um, do the things that like are at the center of my music. Um, which, if you've been listening to it for a while, even if you haven't, it's pretty clear. And just getting better at it, you know. Like, um, I would say that that's a trait that I would say I've had is. Uh, I feel like I consistently have pushed forward. I've not been complacent. I think uh, I think you may need to hire me as, as like an artist. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 definitely. I was gonna say I think you need to hire me as like your professional shit talker because you're such a humble guy. I feel like you need to talk your shit sometimes, man. Because like that's what the records are for. Bro. I mean, and there's nothing you know. It's like you can't uh, like I'm just uh, like everybody is still working. You know, like. Um, there's still a lot, a lot happening. It's not time for any type of victory laps. That's crazy. Man, but you got so many, need, so many great albums. I need more records out. I don't need a victory lap. No, that's fire though, um, because you're not complacent. That's fire. That's fire. But uh, you know, if I'm lucky to still be around and there's gonna be victory laps, trust me, I'm gonna run them mm. to the fucking death. <laughs> Hey man, ten, oh, man. Ten, ten years from now, they're definitely like a Netflix, uh, like underground rap thing or like what, like the, how was the underground rap scene in like the two thousand tens? You're gonna be in that shit, so I mean that'll be the victory lap time right there. So. Uh, I, mean, I feel you, man. Trust me. But uh, you wanna make me an honorary professor at the right liberal arts college? Hey man, in ten years I will probably accept. I, th- I think the I think the, sh- the ten year package is appealing. <laughs> I think the streets need that. I think the streets need the Billy Wood hip hop uh, class. I think we need that, man. I think we need that, man. Um, but yeah, before we get out of here, because I don't want to keep you for too long, it's a couple fan questions, and uh, we'll get out of here, man. Uh, let's see, soccer fan Jay, he says, uh, ask him the advantages of keeping his face and image hidden. Um, I feel like that one's been answered bad times. Um. <laughs> it's uh, it's a more complicated answer that you could probably look up in a million interviews. But basically, um, it's my personal preference. And it's something that has a history and a significance all its own. All right. Um, Gun K. Mally. Gun K. Mail, I think that's your name. Uh, he has three questions. Uh, first one is, he says, I want to know if... He and Lucid have another Arm and Hammer project coming. Yes. Uh, also, could you ask him? Oh, we kind of talked about this, but he said, "Ask him, could we talk about the new age? Uh, how does he feel about the new age of lyricists coming up? Saying they're inspired by uh, Billy. I know Earl is, and a couple of Slums NYC collective rappers are into him a lot." Um, I guess we talked about that yeah. already. Yeah, we I don't know if those people owe anything that they're doing to me, but. Um really inspiring to see people that young that talented play the show with Mike gonna play another show with Mike um, on the 19th in New York City uh, and with the Lucid Fielded um, and yeah that kid is really talented uh, so yeah I, I don't think that they owe anything to me Mike is, is big all on his own uh, last question comes from Not My First. He says, do you have a favorite or most impactful bar that you've ever written that still stays with you to this day? <laughs> I don't know, man. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot. I, I couldn't answer that. I will say that, um, I will say, because I don't want to cop a plea and I want to try and give some good answers, I'll say that I think that Red Dust may be the most powerful thing that I ever wrote. Mm. Um, personally. I think that uh, I did this 
song was my comedy called 383 Myrtle. And I performed that verse a lot because I just, I really, really, I really fuck with that whole song and project. Um, and that verse was real special to me too. And, um, <laughs> Uh, I would have to say the headband is not will always be special to me too because that was really the start of working on History Will Absolve Me. I was working with this cat, Essex Dogs. I was just at his house and I had really almost quit after the Supercon stuff and he was playing that beat and I just took a piece of unlined paper and started writing and that was the first solo thing I'd done in so long. It just sparked me and sparked the confidence to be like, oh, I can do this and um, so I still feel that way to some extent about headband. Um, and then I would say the, the like myth blood dinner. I don't know if you saw that video. You could put that in here. But that little myth blood dinner part on terror management. <coughs> um, I was I was pretty I was pretty into that. Um, so yeah, that would probably be the list. Like picking one bar is just way too hard hey man uh you mentioned red dust uh hiding places definitely one of my favorite projects so shout out to that man it's a very good Thanks. project so i really Thanks. do like that project uh you went crazy on a day and a, a day and a week and a year it's a great song man. it's a great song Thanks. it's a great song i love the way you like hey man i don't want to you get it, man. You're great. I don't want to. I, I definitely have people like. Oh, thank you. I'm glad yeah. that you appreciate it, man. And peace to Mother Mary, who's on that song. Yeah, she did, she did a great job. Kenny Siegel on the beat. Um, I'm glad that so many people connected with that album, man. And I hope that it continues. I hope people check out this Arm and Hammer record we're going to put out. Um, I hope if you haven't checked out Terror Management. Check that out. Check out all the Army Hammer stuff. The records with Blockhead, which, you know, I always fuck about people who are like Dower Candy or known and knows are the biggest records. Blockhead was like Blockhead at NASA, Willie Green. Those are the first producers to really show. Really, it was NASA, Willie Green, Dan Blockhead to show me any love or any confidence and mm. faith and ability to like come through so uh, peace to all those dudes and uh, that's why I was nice on um, on terror management uh, to be able to work with Green really closely again work with Blockhead again NASA worked with Green on one of the songs on there so that was cool um, yeah and I'm just just thinking about moving forward man so lots of lots of things coming I was going to say, did you have anything else to say? But it sounds like you kind of wrapped it up right there. Yeah, probably. All right, man. Well, for everybody listening, I appreciate the interview. Uh, you guys, hope you guys liked it as well. And until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters going to hate. Players going to play. And you guys, holler at your boy.